Hey, what is up? Welcome back. And in the previous video, I talked about accessibility and the increase in the lawsuits. And therefore, there is like a very firm stick for any business or any designer or any technologist to get on board with creating accessible experiences. And looking at the comments and the feedback I got so far, a lot of the people position this need as a very specific and limited approach to accessibility. And what they mean by that, accessibility has always been looked through the disability as a personal attribute lens. So for the last 40 years or so, we approached issues like they're isolated incidents and only affect a few percentiles of, let's say, population. And fast forward to today, that's no longer a case. The definition of disability is not just a health problem, it is a complex phenomenon reflecting the interaction between features of a person's body and features of society in which he or she lives. Bam, this is it. This is by definition what you do today if you want to address accessibility. And with that notion, you kind of realize that what you do, you design or research or formulate some sort of solutions, you either are fully inclusive or you are by default, by design, excluding someone. And it's on you to make that difference. And so what I'm going to give you in this video is a, really a toolkit because it's also a design tool Tuesday. It's going to be a framework which opened my mind back in the day when I was looking into accessibility and learning what good accessibility looks like. So the toolkit is very simple. It's by Microsoft Inclusive Design. You can type it in and search for it and find a lot of PDFs and tools to kind of, you know, supplement this video ultimately. To be inclusive and address the accessibility, you have to consider these three bands. And one is going to be temporary, meaning that the inability is short lived or something just happened. I'm going to give you an example of that. Another could be situational, which again is driven by the context of where you are, what you're doing, what conditions you're dealing with. And the third one is the permanent disability, which basically what you kind of default, I guess, as a new designer or someone who might not work with accessibility as a, you know, as, as a blueprint, that permanent disabilities is the only disabilities which you need to address. But again, that's no longer a case. And to start with some defaults, which I think you thought about before, or maybe not, it's visual impairment. You could have color blindness you could be fully blind. The two are very different things and also they could be caused by some sort of situation or condition. Could be that it's a low light visibility or maybe it's a sunny day and therefore you cannot see the screen or that interactive element with console of sorts. Could be a lot of different conditions in professional or just regular world. Now the temporary condition of the visual impairment could be a migraine, which is super common as well. It could be a headache. It could be that the person simply forgot their glasses or they cannot see well, so therefore they need to kind of adopt your ways. That is about accessibility. And of course, there could be medical conditions which are temporary. There could be a lot of other factors, but let's say I could give you a personal example at that. Earlier in the year, I had a procedure done where I lost my sight for more than 24 hours and it kind of crept in and I was totally blind in the middle of it. And then it kind of came back. And throughout that time, I couldn't operate. I couldn't use the phone. And even in the late hours, when I was already kind of seeing it, the tap and the things how I would operate were disjointed from my visions kind of puts it between temporary and situational. And if you zoom out and think about this, that every day you are effectively could be lacking ability in some sort of situation, some context, you are then going to open your mind to do better with accessibility and being inclusive. And a second example of that could be hearing, let's say. A temporary could be an ear infection and you cannot hear or maybe you're losing the balance because of that. And so for that week or so or a few days, you're not going to be able to operate the he headsets, let's say, because it could cause you headaches and a lot of other issues. That's accessibility. Situational could be noisy environment that let's say you're traveling or you're in a heavy traffic area or you're in a warehouse where it's a lot of moving machinery and things of that nature and it's simply too loud and it all depends on the context of course and if we go to the last example the permanent of lack of hearing let's say 
could be deafness. All of those bands though for hearing could be addressed in a lot of different ways and you've seen some of that. Let's say I know for sure that some people who are going to be watching might be you know situational or temporary or even permanently um, lacking the ability to hear so they're going to open the closed captions and it's going to benefit them all not just the deaf people. It's going to benefit them all. That's the beauty of this. It's a beauty about thinking and zooming out and gaining the perspective that absolutely everyone benefits from these ways to solve the problem, from being just a bit more informed and caring enough to kind of include more people in. And the last example is a good one because it's another thing which a lot of people think but don't really think enough. You could be bound to a wheelchair and therefore physical obstructions could be hard to deal with and therefore you would be excluded. Situationally speaking, you could be driving a car, you could be multitasking. I observed myself during my UX career researching with truck drivers who, you know, operate a vehicle, but also look at their GPS device, but also try to navigate with their co pilot device and also push the buttons on the dashboard. Effectively, half of them cognitively, but also physically are disabling themselves because they are not as able to perform a task at hand so multitasking effectively can provide situational disability to you and a temporary example of that could be a broken finger it could be that you're not tall enough or body shape or size is different than what's intended or designed around you there's a lot of things you could consider and of course these are just quick examples of what it could be there could be many more so i would even advise you as a takeaway take this framework and think very holistically and find examples around you in everyday situations even you watching this video i can guarantee as a meta theme that you are contextually bound to that situation or you have temporary inabilities or perhaps actual again permanent disabilities and therefore your experience have to be shaped to support that and so it becomes a design for all activity and it starts small it starts with a singular designers just thinking more holistically and reflecting oh my specific idea or my specific product is going to be used in many more situations than I could have thought about. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Do leave a comment down below, share this. And on that note, I'll see you next time.